Kev's given this trailer a blast to the washer and they probably do his tractor when he's finished as well. We kind of just ran out of time before harvest and we never ended up getting around to cleaning trailers. I cleaned mine yesterday morning before we went combining and that, uh, Kev didn't have time, so he's just cleaning it this morning before hopefully we go combining later. Shifting a bit of barley this morning before we get combining. So this is our feed store shed in here. So this is all feed barley, it usually always is in here. Once we get another 20 ton in here, I'll get the grain pusher and start pushing it up a wee bit. Right, I'm going to get a lift along the road here with Kev. Other tractors at the field. Dunk's got the combine fired into life. Let's go combining. Take a look, guys are out there just repairing that patch over there. Fingers crossed this time it doesn't sink. All right, hopefully today we have a slightly better run of it. Anyway, this trailer, there's a few air leaks down here. Before we left, I went in with a spanner and tightened them up. So we're just, now that the pressure's built up in the, in the trailer again on the air brakes, just going to go under and check. Good high neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings. Right, that's this field done and dusted. Kev's just hopefully going to get the last of what's in the combine, but might be a squeeze, so I might need to take a wee bit. The trolley, the header trolley's over there, so there's a tractor at that. I'll go and take that up to yard two where we're off to. Don't think we're going to get it all in there. It's not quite all made it in the trailer anyway. Kev's gone to get the bucket, the bucket. We'll shovel this up and chuck it in the trailer. Anyway, field done, on to the next. Spillage has happened. Plonk the header down on here, and then we're away up, right up the top to the yard there. And then there's just two pins that lock it in place. There's wee bushes actually. The old combine didn't have these, but it just takes the slop out the header from... If those bushes weren't there, the whole header on the trolley could slop about that much. Right, we're off to the next field. Sun's out and it's quite warm, so... Whatever moisture it is kicking about from a dew and a bit of rain last night is quickly burning off. Successfully negotiated the road. We're back on farm now. It's quite entertaining coming along the road with a combine and the header and whatnot and cars come motoring around the corner. You flash and you've got your beacons on and you wave and they see you, they look right at you. And they're like, oh. What's that big trailer on the back of the tractor for? Slam on the brakes. Oh, that's what it's for, the combine. All right, this is the block we're on to next. So we've done a wee slid around the end rig, which we did the other day to get to a silage field. We're going to start cutting here now. Oh, who did a dodgy bit of spraying in it? This will take a few days to wipe out. 100 and, 153 acres. Right, I've dumped the header down there. Dump can get that going. I need to go and pick up my tractor and trailer, which is away, over, come on, if I can hold my phone steady, there. Gate ladies ferrying me back to yard three to pick up my tractor. Bit of dodgy driving going on. There's Kev, he's just been into the way bridge with a very full load. Great taxi service, would recommend. Anyway, jump in this machine and away back up to yard two again. Hold on, five live extra. Great conviction. The ashes. There's probably a lot of you out there that absolutely think cricket is dog's water. It's rubbish. The ashes is amazing, especially this time of year in a tractor. It's on for 25 days of the summer, from 11 o'clock till half six at night. If you're into it, it's so good. This is the beauty of no fences. You don't end up with a strip of weeds and grass, an area for rubbish to grow and then transfer into the field. You just get a tiny wee gap in between, which is covered by the sprayer anyway. Yes, you've got the wrong spray, which will get in a tiny bit of the barley, and you'll get the wrong spray, which is tiny wee bit on the wheat. But the weed killer works, and it's clean as anything. No messing about. Basically, this farm, 
I don't know exactly how many how many fields it was when we first started farming it. I would imagine something like eight fields, something like that. So we've now made it into three fields, one of which is just five hectares because it's it's round a road that we can't make it into another field. So we've just got two big chunks, no fences. It's so much more efficient. You lose efficiency on end rigs. So basically, if you make one big field with one end rig, your percentage of end rig to total field area reduces massively. It's threatening, there's a couple of wee droplets. Ah. There's a lot of stew getting kicked up, which is a good sign. You get stew when it's dry, but well, we are chopping as well, so that'll promote a lot of stew. My first load of the day. Hopefully we can motor on today and get a lot of loads done. Mind the roof. I don't know what's going on at the shop today. There's some sort of televised cooking school thing. I should stop for a wee sandwich or something. I'm going to stop on the way back. Uh, rain. Bad news. Hopefully it's not raining at the field. <sighs> Just like that, the road is soaking. I think that's us stuffed. You know what? It might not be too bad up at the field. The track's getting drier and drier as I come up. Nowhere near what it is down the bottom of the road, which is only half a mile. We're stuffed. Ugh. After I mentioned flies and cows and teats with nicks in them and infections and all that, quite a lot of people suggested that garlic um, stops the flies or reduces the fly numbers on the cattle. So I phoned up Harborough because I'm needing to get magnesium buckets anyway for stagger reasons towards as the grass starts to tail off. So I've ordered mag buckets with garlic in them from Harborough. So Harborough do all our minerals for hens, for the beef. They did do the ammonia straw, but they're stopping doing that, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully we'll get that elsewhere. Ordered a pallet full of mag buckets. Not the cheapest thing in the world. I think 1.2 tonne was... Uh, it's about 1,400 quid. But we had a cow last year die from staggers. You save one cow, you pay for the whole pallet full. It's, it's worth it. Hike that up and face it towards the sun so the bed will dry out. Give that 20 minutes and then I'm going to chuck the sprayer on. Kev's going to go and spray some oilseed rape, spray that off. And hopefully in maybe a couple of hours, you can see the ground's quite wet. In a couple of hours, we'll get combining again. This one. Is the electrics, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that, that's for the lights on the trailer. Mm -hmm. The big flashing lights, that's what this one does. The yellow and red ones, yeah. that's the brakes, so it can stop. And then these ones, these are the hydraulics. So these open the back door and tip the trailer up. So the thick one, it tips the trailer, yeah? Yeah. Because it's big and heavy, it needs a big heavy pipe, yeah? Yeah. And then the wee thin ones, they, they do the back door because it's smaller and lighter. They just need wee ones. Yeah? Yeah. So what does this one do? I can't remember. What makes the trailer stop? The brakes. The brakes. Right, so now we're, we're done with the trailer. We're going to take them all off. So this goes here. Have you got one of these on your trailer? Yeah. Yeah. But, but it comes off of the trailer. Yeah, so like this one, it came off, but I'm putting it back on. Now when we put the trailer down, it can sit on here and it doesn't sink into the ground. So what's this one? The lights. The lights. Good boy, we've got the lights off. What are these ones? To help it stop. The brakes. The brakes. Bang. Why does it make a big noise? Because they've got air in them, like a balloon. They've got lots of air in them. And when you let them out, all the air comes out really fast. Like when you let go of a balloon, and it goes so what did these do? The brakes. The brakes, yep. Yeah. And these go up here to keep safe. So they don't keep down. Yeah, so they don't fall down onto the onto the ground. And then these ones, what do they do? They tip up the trail and tip up the door. Yeah. So there's a blue one. The blue one's the thick one that lifts the trailer up. Mm -hmm. And then the two red ones, they're the wee ones for the back door. Oh, well, the yellow one's falling off. I didn't put it on right. So these stay up here, Freddy. Click, click, click. I didn't put it on right. There you go, that's it on right now. And that's it. Done. Right, that's that trailer off. 
go and put the sprayer on now. Combine's packed up for maybe not too long because the sun is out just now. The ground is starting to dry. So we might not be out of action for too long. Smashing. Is it dry now, Freddy? It's dry, is it? Yeah, it's not bad. Rubble. We're fishing out any decent stones, which there's quite a lot of them in here. They're heavy things that move about anyway. Well done to the people who built all these things. You take all these big ones, but you also need wee ones to fill the gap. So it's like, where do you stop? Up and heck. We're probably best off actually just taking this whole heap, putting it in the corner of a field and working away at it. Because there's loads of brick in it, we don't want any of that. There's loads of cement, there's, but all the nice stone like pieces like that we'd like to keep, but there's a lot to sieve through here. We're messing about with harvest, we've got the shed which needs to be up by the winter time for the cows coming in, so the only way to properly get through all this would be to take it all away or shift it off of this site right now, just 100 metres down the field, heap it all up and just work away at it on winter jobs and stuff like that, you know. Anyway, abandoned stones, go and combine it again. Okay, we're back in action. Hopefully, we get a good run at it now. Don't get stopped. I mean, it is there is dark clouds about. It's not glorious sunshine anyway, so anything could happen. But three loads, and it's quarter past three, so shocker of a start. Annoyingly, we've had a couple of drowned out bits. This is the worst of it. There's another, you can't quite see them, but there's a couple of weir bits over there. But yeah, that's the worst bit that got drowned out. Probably be an acre in there, maybe even two. Now we're one man down, just need to keep an eye on the grain dryer between me and dad when we're back here carting. It's drying right now, you can hear it, I don't know what stage it's at though. Dad's painted the door, a new door on here, it's falling to pieces. Burners are still on, so it's still drying at the moment. 36 or 40 degrees, so this needs to get to 40, so I'll be another 20, 30 minutes before it gets to 40 degrees then it'll have another half hour of cooling cycle. So the grain dryer won't be emptying for about an hour, just fine, it's about an hour round trip, so I'll be back here in an hour. Dad'll tip his next load, generally two loads down, push it up, that'll be coming off in an hour. It's fine at the moment because we've got hardly any grain in here, so we can tip, tip straight onto the pit. My tractor's been pinched. QMS are right here filming some bits. I've got a free burger in return, they want to film some bits of the tractor, but the combine's going to be waiting on me. Tractor's gone. <laughs> Alex. Health and safety aren't impressed. I got a good burger, look at that. <laughs> they were needing some tractor shots, but it's QMS, so Quality Meat Scotland. They're basically using us, our place, to film some bits for an advert and things like that. And they're using our beef to... They basically had barbecue and I presume chefs there making up burgers and whatnot, but I had a beef burger with blue cheese and oh yeah, belt it was great. I've got my tractor back in one piece, thankfully. Right, we've opened up this field. The straw is not particularly brittle or dead. You can hear it. It's not really crackling like it's breaking and brittle. It's a bit soft and a bit of dampness to it, so that needs a few days. And in those few days, there's a fair bit of rain forecast, so that's not going to be fun. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. Ooh, just about to spill a little bit there. There we go. Home we go. One hour later, and we're back again. The batch is coming out. Unlock that, that'll let my spools go. Kev's got this joystick set up for the back, for the trailer. Nudge it back, trailer tips up. Nudge it to the right, back door opens. No, to the left. To the left. Left and back, right and down. Dad didn't get a chance to push this up because he phoned me because he couldn't get the trailer to tip or open. So he was stuck here for 10 minutes. Well, I'll just get this pushed up. I'll do it, a bit more space to tip now. Back we go. I prefer this tractor in almost every instance, but I actually much prefer the new Holmes to load a trailer off the combine. 
with this, it's quite tricky just to get a really constant speed to it and then just subtly adjust it slower and faster. Find it way easier than you know, not sure why. I think this just takes a little bit of time because it's variable transmission and the revs are always kind of catching up to what you want or what you don't want. You put your foot down and you give it a second then the revs jump up and then it catches up in speed. Whereas the New Holland's is just a bit more traditional, put your foot down, just chuck some more fuel and air into the engine and it goes faster. You sit in one gear and you know the variation in that gear, whereas this is kind of like, you've got the whole range. And I know you can adjust here, the, there's a finite control of basically what speed the throttle pedal will take you to. As in, I can have the foot pedal fully down, will take me right away to 55k, or I can bring it right away back and say, the whole range of the foot pedal, top to bottom, takes me from zero to 6k. So I've got way more control at slow speeds, but I still much prefer the new ones. Don't know why. Or I'm just not using it right. I don't know. Anyone else who thinks they've got a similar idea as you'd prefer loading off of other tractors, but... Kev's finished up spraying. I hope he doesn't want his tractor back. I'm not going to give him that. The dry pile's starting to grow. Obviously, Dad's been carting now, so there's no one to run grain out that door and into the bottom shed. Now Kev's finished spraying. Dad'll come back to moving that and keeping the dryer going. Oh no! Oh, oh! We're back in all blue. Right, that's the last wee strip of this block well there's we're just heading over there there's a bit over there we're getting through it the sun's just not far away from disappearing it is what's the time six minutes past nine i've got past on my mouth gate lady who is right next to me she has delivered me food it's been a fairly successful afternoon after the rain delay i've slowly developed the man flu today so i'm feeling very sorry for myself Anyway, we charge on. We'll probably finish this block here, finish this end of the field. Well, we'll see what time it is. Probably finish it there. The sun's away now, so it's only gonna start getting damper and damper. Is that the right word? Damp, damperer, damp, damper. More moist. More damp. Wetter. It's only gonna get wetter from here. It's about half. <laughs> you out. <laughs> it keeps interrupting. It keeps interrupting. Doesn't appreciate the importance of guys listening shambles, shambles. End, end, of, end of july the, the day lasts so much longer by the time you get to the end of harvest it's about half nine just now it's pretty much pitch black, <laughs> pitch black. <laughs> quarter past ten at the moment so we're getting there we're making good progress. Dad's cracked out the grain pusher. What a belter I think that is. It's a beast. <laughs> right, that's Kev's last load. I'm gonna get one more, and then that's gonna be us. We'll call it a day. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was. One, two, three, jump. Hey!